Welcome to Del Campo's production of And Then There Were None. Please take this moment to turn off all electronic devices and flash photography is strictly prohibited since it distracts the actors. There are no lifeguards on duty, so please stay off the dock and out of the aisleways during the show. During intermission, restrooms will be available. Men's is on the left while women's is on the right. We would also like to take a moment and thank our PTA for endorsing our concession stand, which can be found in the back of the room during the uh, intermission. All proceeds go to help the theater program, and all donations are greatly appreciated. Speaking of donations, donations of $15 or more will receive a free Blu-ray disc of our last show, Little Shop of Horrors. And those students here for extra credit, you may get your program signed after the show. Now please, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Do you think I could have a drink? I'm very drunk. Of course you could. 
It certainly is warm after that steep climb. What's yours? Oh, no, thank you. Not for me. Not on duty. A good secretary is never off duty, you know. Really? Oh, well, this is exciting. What? All of this. All the smell of the sea, the gulf, the beach. Oh, and this lovely house. I think you're going to enjoy that, though. I think you are. I think we both are. Here's to you. You're very lovely. Oh. Oh. Our host and hostess have arrived yet, sir. 
My name's Lava. Mine's Wargrave. How do you do? Fine, thank you. Have a drink. Yes, please. A whiskey. Hello. Davis. Davis is my name. Wonderful place. Quite unique. As you say, very, um, unique. Your drink. Oh, well. thank you. Do you know if old Badger Berkeley has rolled up yet? Who did you say? Badger Berkeley, of course. He wrote me in for the show. But when's he coming? I don't think he is coming. Nobody by the name of Berkeley, I'm afraid. That dirty old double-crosser. He's let me down, you know. Well, it's sort of a wizard island we have ourselves here. It's part of a wizard girl that's secretary. I say, old man, how about dressing for dinner if there's time? Let's go and explore. Oh, is it? Things are been at sixes and sevens with the Owens not turning up. <laughs> Tricky, what? I say, it's a good day for a holiday, what? Are you going to sit down? You seem to be sitting in my seat. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you were part of the family. No, it's not exactly that. I've never been here before, but I do live at the Fenton Club. Have for the last ten years, and my seat has always been here. You can't get used to sitting anywhere else. It becomes a bit of a habit. Yes, it certainly does. Thank you, sir. Not quite as comfortable as the chair at the Fenton, but it's nice. Haven't done anything of this sort for well over four years. Yes, <coughs> quite nice of the Owens, don't you think? May I have your key, sir? Oh, yes. Um, do you know if Lady Constance Colmington is coming? Lady Constance Colmington? I don't believe so, sir, unless she's coming down with Mr. and Mrs. Owen. Oh. May I have your key, sir? No. I'll unpack for myself. Very well. Dinner is at 8 o'clock. Shall I show you to your rooms? Please. Follow me. Here you are, miss. I'll call Roger. Yes, thank you. You 
watch me these dirty glasses. You're always leaving the dirty work to me. Here I am with a four four sitter on my hands and nobody to help me. You could at least give me a hand with the dishing up. Who was that you were talking to, by the way? Davis, South African gentleman. No class if you ask me and no money either. Well, I don't like it. Don't like any of them much. More like that bunch we have in the boarding house, I say. Davis gives out that he's some kind of millionaire or something, Ethel. But you should see his underwear. They're cheap as they make them. Oh, it's I'm ridiculous. Saying, it's not treating us right. All these guests are having today, and no maids until tomorrow. What do they think we are? Well, at least the money's good. So it ought to be. Catch me going into service again, unless the money is good. Well, the money is good, Ethel, so what are you going on about now? I can tell you this. I'm not staying any place where I'm close on. Cooking is my business. I'm a good cook. First rate, I'd say. The kitchen is my place, and this housework is none of my business. You know, I've got a good mind to put on my hat and my coat and walk out now and go straight back home to home. You can't do that. Why not? Because we're on an island! <laughs> Had you maybe forgotten that? Yes. I don't know if I fancy being on an island much. I don't know that I fancy it either, come to that. No slipping down to the pub or going out to the pictures. Oh well, it's self wages on account of difficulties, and there's plenty of whiskey in the house. That's all you ever think about. Whiskey. Now, now, Ethel, quit your whining and get back to the kitchen, or else your dinner is going to be spoiled. It'll be spoiled anyway, I expect. Everybody's going to be late. Waste it on them. Thank goodness I get to make the souffle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is everything all right, Miss Rogers? Can you hand it between the two of you? Yes, miss. My sister talks an awful lot, uh, but she gets her work done sometimes. Apple! Oh, yes, of course. A remarkably fine night. It is 
It just gave me a turn, that's all. Gave me a turn too, of course it did. Now what Who I Who was it who put that record on the gramophone? Was it you, Rogers? Yes. yes, sir, but I was just following orders. Whose orders? Mr. Owens. Let me get this quite clear. Mr. Owens' orders were what exactly? I was to put the record on the gramophone, and I find it in a drawer in the study. I thought it was just a piece of music. A very remarkable story. It's the truth, sir, before heaven is the truth. I thought it was just a piece of music. It even has a title on it. Is there a title? Well, yes. It is entitled Swan Song. <laughs> Like this, something must be done about this. Whoever this Mr. Owen is. Well, that's just it. Who is he? That is what we must go into very carefully. Rogers, I suggest you get your sister up to bed and then come back here. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll give you a hand. Oh, Doctor, most of you are right. Oh, yes, that's all right. I do not know much about you, sir, but I feel like I need another drink. I agree. Whiskey for everyone. She'll be all right. I've given her a sedative. Surely you don't drink after this, Doctor. No, thank you. I never touched that. Now then, Rogers, we must get to the bottom of this. Tell us what you know of Mr. Owen. Well, he owns the place, sir. <laughs> I am aware of this fact. What I wish to know is what you personally know of the man. You see, sir, I really couldn't tell you because I've never seen him. What do you mean? My sister and I were engaged to a letter to the registry office in Plymouth called the Regina. Maybe you've heard of it? That's a high-class word. Have you got the letter? Yes, sir. Go on with your story. Well, sir, my sister and I arrived from the board just like the letter said. Everything was very nice. There's plenty of food in stock. It just needs a little bit of dusting. What next? Nothing, really. It said there was another letter by the morning post saying that Mr. and Mrs. Owen might be detained in London. And if so, we're to do the best we could. And in that letter were instructions about dinner and the gramophone. Hmm, Hetty Grits Hotel and Tight Grit. Coronation machine number five. You know what I was thinking. Shut up! <laughs> and slide so paper, that's the most common day. I'm sorry, paper, I'm actually coming here. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to get much of this. It's been handled too much. Quite a little detective, aren't we? You know, you like Norman Owen. His parents must not have liked him much because I was not born. Thank you, Mr. Marston. You have drawn my attention to a curious and suggestive point. I believe the time has come for us to pool our information of our unknown hosts. We are all his guests, and it would be profitable if we explained how that came to be. Well, I personally find it very strange. Having received a letter with an illegible signature, supposedly from someone I met two or three years ago, I took the name to be awesome because I've never met Mr. Owen. Have you got the letter? Yes, I'll fetch it for you. Thank you. Miss Clayton. Well, I've never actually met Mrs. Owen. I applied to a secretarial agency, Miss Grenfell's in London. I was offered this post and accepted. You were never interviewed by your prospect employer? No, but I do have the letter. Oh, may I see it? Please? Yes, of course. I have it right here. Thank you. Why, yes, everything seems to be in order. Mr. Marston. My vow, about your birthday. He told me to roll up here. He wired me, but I do not have the wire. Thank you. Dr. Armstrong. Oh, well, in this circumstance, I think I may admit that my visit here was professional. Mr. Owen, who I never met before, wrote to me that he was worried about his wife's health, her nerves, to be precise. He wanted our report without her being alarmed. He therefore suggested that my visit was to be regarded as one of the ordinary guests. You didn't hesitate to obey the summons even though you didn't know the man? Yeah, well, he mentioned a colleague of mine, and I had some fee. Yes. Oh, thank you, Miss Brent. Dear Miss Brent, I do hope you remember me. We were together at Bellhaven Guest House in August some years ago, and we seem to have so much in common. I'm starting a guest house of my own on an island off the coast of Death. I think there is a real opening for a place that has good plain English cooking and a nice old-fashioned type of individual. None of this nudity and grammar goes through half the night. I shall be very glad if you could see your way to spending your summer holiday on Villager Island as my guest, of course. I suggest August the 8th, 1240 from Paddington to Oak Ridge. Yours sincerely, you and... Why, yes, the signature is slightly ambiguous. I like the nudity touch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this? <laughs> Is my own decoy letter much like your uh, General Mackenzie? I did receive a letter from a Mr. Owen. Must have been someone I met at the club before. He did mention some of my old cronies. He thought it excused an informal invitation, but I did not keep the letter. Thank you. And Captain Longbar? The same sort of thing. Received a letter mentioning some mutual friends. Haven't kept it either, I'm afraid. Just now, we have all experienced a disturbing event. A seemingly disembodied boy spoke to each of us by name and slung certain accusations against us. We will deal with these accusations presently. I am, however, interested in a minor point. Among the names listed, there was a William Henry Bloor. But, to our knowledge, there is no Bloor among us. However, the name of Davis was not mentioned. What have you to say for yourself, Mr. Davis? Well, cats out of the bag, I suppose. Davis, Davis is not my name. <laughs> You're William Henry Bloor? I am. 
I will add something to that. Not only are you here under a false name, Mr. Moore, and not only is your tie horrific, but I've noticed this evening that you are a first-class liar. You claim to be from the tall South Africa. I happen to know South Africa rather well, and I'm prepared to swear you've never said foot there in your life. Oh, you've got me all wrong. I'm an ex-CID man. A lovely, a copper. I got my credentials. I run an agency down in Plymouth. I was put onto this job by Mr. Owen. Said I was to look after his wife's jewels, but I don't think there is a Mrs. Owen. I think they're all fake. Your conclusions are, I believe, justified. You and Nancy Owen, Ulrich Norman Owen, all to say you and Owen, Owen, or by slight fancy, unknown. Oh. But, but that's fantastic, mad. Oh, I have no doubt in my own mind that we've been invited here by a mad, a potentially dangerous and homicidal lunatic. <laughs> Either way, 
Mr. Unknown Owen is the only one who seems to know all the facts. Miss Claycorn? I was nursery governess to Peter Hamilton. We were staying in Cornwall for the summer, and he was forbidden to swim out far. Though one day, when my attention was distracted, he started off. Oh, but as soon as I saw what happened, I swam after him. But I couldn't get there in time. Was there an inquest? Yes, I was exonerated by the coroner. And his mother didn't blame me either. Thank you. Miss Rent? I have nothing to say. Nothing? Nothing. You wish to reserve your defense? It is not a question of defense. I've always acted according to the dictates of my conscience. My, my. What a law-abiding group we seem to be. Myself accepted, of course. Well, we're waiting on your story, Captain Lombard. Me? I haven't got a story. What do you mean you haven't got a story? I'm sorry to disappoint you all. It's just that I plead guilty. It's perfectly true. I did leave those natives alone to die in the brush. A matter of self-preservation, you understand. You left behind your men? Hardly the act of a puka mahib, I'm afraid. Besides, <coughs> self-preservation is a man's first duty. Either way, natives don't mind dying, you know. They don't feel about it as Europeans do. Our inquiry rests there. Now then, Rogers, who's on the island besides ourselves, you and your sister? Nobody, sir. Are you quite certain? Yes, sir. Wait, quite Rogers! Sure. Don't leave just yet. Yes? I am not quite certain of our host's intentions for having us to assemble here today. However, he cannot be considered sane in the slightest sense of the term. He may be dangerous. I believe it would do us best to leave as soon as possible. Yes. Tonight! No! Excuse me, sir, but there's no boat on the island. What? There's no boat on the island? No, but Freddy Naircott comes by every morning. She brings the milk, the bread, the post, the papers, and whatever you guys order. Why don't we telephone to the mainland? Yes. The telephone is disconnected, sir. That means it doesn't call. It is a bit unsporting one. We ought to ferret out this mystery before we go. The whole thing is like a detective story. Like that new game Clue. It is positively thrilling. In my time of life, I don't desire much thrilling. The legal life is narrow, and I am all for crime. Well, here's to it. Unless you've climbed all the way to the top. 
Shall we go up there again? It's no use, Doctor. A wash pot never boils. It's like waiting for Rogers to make breakfast or Miss Brent to cross the road. What can this woman learn what they're doing? She's from Dev. They're all like that in Dev. And what's Rogers? She ought to be about. You ask me, Rogers seemed pretty badly shaken last night. Oh, I know, ghastly, the whole thing. I take an even bet that she and her sister did kill that old lady. Do you really think so? Yeah. <laughs> I do. Never saw a person more scared. Guilty as hell, I'd say. Fantastic. The whole thing fantastic. Oh, she's hot. Who, Rogers? Yes. But there's no way she could have. <laughs> there's no boats on the island. You just said so. But we only have Rogers' word that there's no boats on the island. What if there is one? What if she's left? There's no way she'd be allowed to do that. <laughs> did you sleep well, General? Yes, I did. Indeed, I dreamed of my wife. Let's sleep. Well, that's uncomfortable. Who was Narakot again? Who's Narakot? The woman who brought us over yesterday? That was yesterday? Should wonder that you're surprised. Crazy gramophone records, suicides, about all a man can bear. So you don't understand how strange. I don't like the look of him. I like the young Marcy's suicide must have shocked him. He looks old. <laughs> Where is the poor young fellow now? I put his body up in the study myself. Dr. Armstrong, I suppose it was suicide. Oh, what else could it be? Oh, I don't know, but suicide. You know, I've been thinking. Suppose Mr. Unknown one really is on the side. What if he's here watching us? Rogers might not know, or he might have told not to say anything. But would it have been possible for someone to tamper with Marston's drink without all of us realizing? It was just standing up there. Anyone could have put something in without us noticing. <laughs> What's that? Oh, dear. Oh, there you are, Doctor. I've been looking for you all over. Did you just about to take a look at my sister? Oh, yes, of course. Is she feeling under the weather? Then what exactly did 
happened. Impossible to say without an autopsy! If this death were to have occurred to one of your private patients, what would have been your procedure? Oh, well, without any previous knowledge of her state of health, I certainly can't give a certificate. Oh, she was a nervous looking creature. She had a bad price last night. Perhaps it simply was heart failure, or heart simply failed to beat. What caused it to fail? Conscience! She was accused together of her sister of having deliberately murdered her former employer, an old lady. So you think that's true too? Of course. You all saw her last night. She broke down completely and fainted. The shock of having her wickedness brought forth was too much, and she literally died of fear. Well, it's possible, but what do you want to tell about knowing her state of health? Call it, if you prefer, an act of God. Um, this friend. You regard it as impossible that a singer should not be struck down the ground of God? <laughs> My dear lady, in my experience of ill-doing, Providence leaves the problem of chastisement and conviction to us mortals. There is no easy way out. Now, let's be reasonable. What did she have to eat or drink before she went to bed? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. nothing. What about tea? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Mm. Rogers told me she had nothing whatsoever. Nothing? Nothing. Rogers wouldn't say that. <laughs> so that's your idea? Yes. I think Miss Brent's right. Rogers and her sister really did kill that old woman. They're feeling safe, happy about it. Happy. Happy. Happy? Yes. <laughs> Until last night, some lunatic goes and spills the beef. So what happens? It's the young woman who cracks. That's right. Now, did you see her sister hanging around when she was coming to? Not all family solicitude. Ah, now on your sweet life, she was a cow of bricks. Why? She's in danger. Her sister is dangerous. So what does she do? Takes a nice cup, puts something, something inside, but she dies in the morning and doctor says she had nothing. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, that's impossible. A woman wouldn't do that. Not to her own sister. I'm surprised what some people would do. <clears throat> You'll excuse me, miss, but I'm getting on with breakfast. But it's lunch that's work that I'm worried about. Would deviled ham and crackers be sufficient? I also think that I can manage some tin fruit cheese and biscuits if you so desire. Yes, that would be alright, Lunch. Lunch? We're not going to be here for lunch. And when the hell is that boat coming? It's the boat floor. What? The boat isn't coming. What? Freddie Nerecott is always here before 8 o'clock. Is there anything else you'll be requiring, miss? No, that's all, Rogers. Mm -hmm. oh! Oh! And it's not Rogers? Her sister's lying dead upstairs, and here she is talking about lunch? And now she tells us the boat's not coming. Well, how the hell does she know? Mr. Ford! What? <laughs> Only eight little villagers here, Doctor. 
here. I suppose that's coincidence too. Because there's nobody else on the island! Don't be so sure of that. Oh, this is terrible! We're all going to die! Then the sooner we get to work, the better. Come on, Armstrong, come on, Laura, we'll make short work. Nobody's got a gun on them, do they? I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> always carry that event with you? Usually. I've been in a few tight places before, and it's always reassuring that can be. Bet you've never been in a tighter place than this. Homicidal lunatic on the island? He's probably got a whole arsenal of weapons, just waiting to use them. You might be wrong, Dr. Laura. Many homicidal maniacs are quiet to unassuming people. Delightful fellows. You'd never guess there was anything wrong with them. If it turns out to be one of that kind, we'll let uh, you handle them, Doctor. Uh, let's search the island. You take the house, Lombard. Right. House ought to be easy. No sliding panels or secret doors. If mine doesn't get you before you get him. Don't worry, but you two better stick together. Remember, one got left behind. <laughs> Very young and energetic, that Captain Lombard. But he's right, don't you think? If there is someone on the island, we'll be bound to run into him. He's practically bare rock out there. I believe this problem requires brains, not rock. Uh, where are you going? I am going to sit in the sun and think, my dear young lady. Where did I put my other skein of wool? I can to leave it upstairs. Would you like me to go see if I can find it? No, no, I know if I can be. <laughs> They're all wasting time, wasting time. Do you think so? Yes, it's better to just sit here and wait. Wait for what? For the end, of course. I wish I could find my Leslie. Oh, your wife? Yes, she was a beautiful woman. Oh, was she? Yes, I loved her very much. Of course, I was a lot older than she was. She was only 27. Arthur Richmond was 26. He was my A.D.C. They used to speak of music and plays together, and she even made fun of me. <laughs> oh, they liked each other very much, and I was pleased. I thought she took a motherly interest in the boy. But damn fool was I. No fool like an old fool, just like a cloak. The way I found out while we were out in France. You see, she wrote letters to both of us, but then she put the letters in the wrong oh, envelope. No, no, it's quite all right. I loved her very much. I, I never said anything to Arthur Richmond, though. I let you guys decide here at School Murders Rage. Damn, young hypocrite! I believed in him. Trusted him! I wonder what the others are doing! <laughs> I sent him to his death. <laughs> it was all too easy. All anyone could ever say was, how I made a little blunder, lost my nerve a little bit, sacrificed one of my best men. But I never said anything to Leslie. No, we carried on as usual for a while, but nothing was quite real anymore. She died of pneumonia. She had a heart-shaped face, gray eyes, brown hair that curled. Oh, don't. I suppose, in a way, it was. Murder. Curious thing. Murder. And I thought I was such a law abiding man. Serve them damn well, right? That's what I thought at the moment until, you know, right? What do you mean? We're all going to die. Oh, no, no, I don't know that. Oh, you're not there yet. You don't understand. You don't know the relief. The blessed relief of knowing that you've done away with it all, that you no longer have to deal with it. Oh, but General, please, will you please? Shut up! You don't understand. I will sit here until my Leslie comes back. <laughs> oh, I read it. Oh, I read it. Oh, correct. No secret passage, one course. Oh, don't. Why you do it well? Now have a drink to steady your nerves. A drink? <coughs> Two corpses in one house at nine o'clock in the morning, and you say, have a drink? An old man going quite crackers. Oh, that's fine. Just have a drink. Ten people accused of murder. Oh, no, it's all right, everyone. Just have a drink. Oh, everything's fine, right? And only you have your drink. All right. <laughs> you 
feel that way. We have something in common, you and I. Rogues and murderers can't fall out, you know. Rogues and murderers? All right, you don't like the company of rogues and murderers, and you won't have a drink. I'm going to go finish searching. I'm taking this with me. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, I've been meaning to speak with you. 
It's about that murder on the island. I think I know who it is. Really? Did you ever hear of the Lizzie Borden case? An elderly couple found murdered in their home. The only possible suspect was a middle-aged spinster, their daughter. But it was incredible, and so incredible that she was acquitted with no other suspects. So your answer to the problem is Miss Emily Brent? Of course. She's mad. Religious mad, I'm telling you. Worst kind. I formed the impression that your suspicions were in a different quarter. Well, they were, but I've changed my mind, and I'll tell you why. Emily Brent's not scared, and she's the only one who is not fashionably dressed tonight. <laughs> No boat will put out in this, and it couldn't make it through anyway. Oh, Miss Brent, I'll get you some coffee. Oh, allow me. Thank you. It, you were right to insist on our going to lunch and having some whiskey with it, too. I feel better. The court's always adjourned for lunch. All the same, it seems rather like a nightmare. It doesn't seem real. Well, what are we going to do about it? We must hold an informal <laughs> court of inquiry. We may be able to eliminate at least some innocent people. Who do you suspect, Miss Claiborne? If Miss Claiborne suspects any of us, that is rather an awkward question, Mr. Bourne. Well, I don't think any of you are guilty. Though, if you did ask me who I suspected, I would say Dr. Armstrong. Armstrong? Is that nervous rat? Well, yes, don't you see? She's had far and away the best chance out of any of us to kill Miss Rogers. Terribly easy for her being a doctor to give her an overdose of that sleeping stuff. Yes, but someone might have slipped something in the brand. Don't forget that. Her sister had an opportunity to administer a drug. No, I've changed my mind. It's Rogers. She's stupid. Hasn't got the money for this. Oh, do go and change. 
Well, what were you going to say? I want to know why you brought a revolver to a little social gathering. You do, do you? Mm -hmm. Well, I have led a rather adventurous life, and I've gotten into the habit of carrying a revolver about with me. It's always reassuring to have it handy, don't you think, Lord? We don't carry them. And I don't believe you. I want the truth. My, my, you are a rather suspicious fellow, aren't you, Blore? Well, I know a fishy story when I hear one. If this is about Dad's revolver, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Ha! All right, fine. I received a letter from the Owens asking me to come here as their guest. Said it would be worth my while. The writer also said it heard I had a reputation for being a good man in a tight place. Said there might be some danger, but it'd be all right. So long as I kept my eyes open. <laughs> well, that was stupid. I'd never have thought of something like that. Well, I did. I was bored. My God, I was bored in that tame country. Besides, it was an intriguing proposition, don't you agree? Too vague for my liking. Well, that was the charm of it. It aroused my curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, quite. Oh, do go and change, please. I'm going, I'm going, my sweet. The maternal instinct, I believe it's called. Don't be ridiculous. That's a tall story if I ever heard one. If it's true, why didn't you just tell us last night? Uh, well, perhaps he thought that this was exactly the emergency he was preparing for. Perhaps it is. No, I hardly think so. No, this was just Mr. Owens' little bit of cheese to get him in the trap with the rest of us. Although, he must have known him well enough to rely on his curiosity. If that's the case, I don't trust Longhart a yard. Longhart, yard. <laughs> and are you such a good judge of truth? We must get off the island. We must before it's too late! Well, one thing we must not do, Doctor, is give way to nerves. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just a simple case of position. Heal thyself. It's just that... I've been so tired and run down lately. Sleeping badly? Yes. I keep dreaming in hospitals, operations, a, a knife at my throat. Real nightmares. Yes. Do you ever dream that you're in the courtroom sentencing a man to death? Are you by chance referring to Mr. Edward Seaton? I assure you I shall lose no sleep over the matter. The man was a ruthless criminal. He made an admiral defense. The jury was likely to see him off. I could see, however. I cut Seaton's use. Well, pretty cold up here, isn't it? Oh, yes, I do wish Rogers would hurry up. Where did she say she'd gone? She said she had to go get some sticks. Sticks? Sticks? Oh, my God! Oh, my word! How many are there? Are there only six? There are only five! Oh, I, oh, I can't count! Rogers <laughs> and the Oh, What the hell is Blora up to like a madman? Have you seen Rogers? No, should I have? Two more villagers have gone! Two? Oh, I thought it was you! I'm all right. Well, what is it? It's Rogers! In the scullery! Is she? Dead! <laughs> How? <laughs> Chopped in half! With an axe! Well, I guess that's the end of her trails. Get it? And guys. <laughs> <laughs> she was never the sharpest axe in the shed. <laughs>
Well, I have to leave the gloom. Damn that generator running down. I say, why don't we play a nice round of game? Let's invent one called Suspicions. A suspects B, B suspects C, and so on. Let's start with you, Floor. I think it's pretty obvious who you suspect. Well, I'm your fancy, aren't I, Floor? I wouldn't say <coughs> that. You're quite wrong, you know. Abstract justice just isn't in my line. If I were going to commit murder, well, it'd have to be something in it for me. Look, all I'm saying is you've acted suspiciously from the start. You told two different stories, you brought that gun to the island, and now you tell us you've lost it. I have lost it, likely. And what do you think I've done with it? I suggested myself that you should search me. And you wouldn't have it on you. Too clever for that, as long as you think I've cached it. Ready for the next time! <laughs> If I wanted to kill you all, I would have done it by now. Well, that's not the big idea, is it? What? The crazy touch? My god, man, I'm sane enough. But Dr. Armstrong says there are some lunatics you wouldn't even know are lunatics. I'd say that's true enough. Well, say, right. there must be something we could do uh, together. There must, there must be, be something, something we could do. do. Well, honestly, <laughs> if we lit a bonfire. In this weather? It is sadly a question of time and patience. The weather will die, and when it does, then we can light a, a bonfire, a heliograph. Time! <laughs> time! We get the Forbes time, we shall all be dead! I believe the precautions we have adopted shall be adequate. We shall all be dead, I tell you, all of us, except for one. And he'll think of something else, always thinking, even now! Poor Louise. Oh, what was her name? Calise. Was it nerves that made you do her in, Doctor? No. Drink. Uh. I used to be quite a heavy drinker. God help me, I was drunk when I operated. Quite a simple procedure, really. My hands shaking all <coughs> over the place. I, I can remember her even now. A large, heavy, countrified woman. And I killed her. Uh -huh. I was right. That's how it happened. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I gave up drink, gave it up altogether, and went into the study of nerve diseases. Very successfully. Now, one or two lucky shots. Good results with one or two important men. They talk to friends. God, the last year or two I've been so busy I've hardly known where to turn. I've climbed to the top of the tree. Until Mr. Unknown Oak, and down came Doctor, and Cradle, and all. Please. Will you stop? with your damnable sneering and joking. Ladies and gentlemen, please. We cannot afford to quarrel. No, no, she's right, of course. Oh, I apologize. It's this ridiculous waiting that gets on my nerves. We are adopting, I feel, the only possible precautions. So long as we stay within each other's sights, a, previous, a repetition of previous events is and must be impossible. We have all been subject to search, so we know no man has a firearm nor a knife, and we know no one has poison or cyanide. So as I've said before, as long as we stay within each other's sights, we shall be fine. But we can't go on like this. We shall need food, sleep. Especially food. <laughs> of course, the murderer's only chance of giving to us is when we are detached from the group. So long as we prevent that, we shall be fine. Fine? You're awfully silent, Vera. Well, there isn't anything to say. Though I do wonder what the time is. Stop waiting, waiting for the hours to go by, knowing that there might be your last. What is the time? Half past eight. Only that. Oh, awful like this. How are all the candles holding out? I think we've got half a pack left. Do you think the storm is dying down, Sir Lawrence? Perhaps, though we shouldn't become too optimistic. The murderer has everything on his side, even the weather seems to be following his Plans. What about that food idea, right? If you like, I can make up a platter of some doubled ham yes. and crackers and whatever else I can find. Love that. So, you four, stay here. Not quite. What? You see, it may be inadvisable for us to eat or drink something that you have prepared out of our sight. Oh. You don't like me, do you? It's not a question of likes or dislikes. There are very few tricks that will get by you, are there, Sir Lawrence? 
if you won't be offended by my saying so. You're my fancy. Captain Lombard, this is hardly the time for any of us to indulge in taking offense. I don't think it's Bloor, you see. He just doesn't seem to have the imagination for a job like this. I could be wrong, but if I am, I take my hat off to you for being a damned fine actor. Gee, thanks. It couldn't be you, Doctor. You just don't seem to have the, oh, I don't know, the nerve for something like this. You know. Well, you have plenty of nerve, but you strike me as someone who is eminently sane. If you were going to commit murder, well, you'd have to have a thoroughly good motive. Thank you. You're welcome. Here, here, I just thought of something. Splendid. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? A vegetable, I think. Okay. No, 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 that's mad. That's mad. He says he's a police officer. But we have no proof of that. He only said so after the gramophone record spoke his real name. Before that, he was just posing as some South African millionaire. How do we really know this police officer isn't another one of his impersonations? Excuse me! How do we really know about him? Nothing at all! Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's a police officer, all right. Just look at his feet. Go on. <laughs> Shut up. Well, now we know where we are. By the way, Doctor, Miss Claythorpe expects you. <laughs> yes, she does. Haven't you seen her shoot a dirty look from time to time? It all works out quite prettily, actually. I suspect Sir Lawrence. Bloor suspects me. Armstrong suspects Bloor. And, well, what about you, sir? By turning on in the day, I formed a certain conclusion. To me, all of the events have unmistakably pointed to a singular person. I am of the same mind. Which one? Well, no, I don't believe saying the name at the present time would be advisable. Do you think it would be inadvisable in the public interest? Exactly. You know what's in the public interest? Dinner! Oh. <laughs> no. no, 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 let's stay here. Let's stay here. I can't say I'm hungry. I'm not quite ravenous myself. Why do you go on and have a guzzle by yourself, Floor? I think I saw some biscuits in the kitchen. We can have those. All right, fine. But Floor, what? An unopened box, Floor. Of course. You know, I wonder what happened to the upstairs bathroom curtain, the one that Rogers missed. I cannot, by the wildest stretch of the imagination, seem to think of what a murderer would want with a bathroom curtain. I think it's strange, though. Things seem to have been going missing. Uh, Miss Fred, she lost a skein of knitting wool. So whoever this murderer is, he or she must also be a kleptomaniac. Or they enjoy knitting. Oh, how does it go? Five little villagers. Going in for love, one got in Chancery. In Chancery, but how does that apply? Um, exactly. And that is why I am sitting here. Oh. But I'm casting you as the role of murderer, not victim. The term can also be applied to a boxer. Hmm. Maybe we'll get in a free fight. I suppose that rules you out, my dear. Oh, it's this awful rhyme. It keeps going round and round in my head. Oh, I think I'll remember it's like that. Mr. Floor, he's gone a long time. Yes, I suspect the big bad wolf has gone by now. Captain Long. More than once, I have suggested to you for you to restrain that peculiar sense of humor of yours. I'm sorry, it must just be a form of nervousness. Well, I've got the mood. Search him. Hands up, nerdy business. Excuse me. No, thank you. <laughs> you really ought to have some beer. Have eaten all day. I couldn't eat anything. I warn you, nor will wolf the lot. <laughs> I don't see why you have to be so funny about it. No use starving ourselves, right? Uh, how long are you for cigarettes? I haven't got any. Every now to do. Fortunately, I'm a pipe smoker. Fortunately, I'm a pipe smoker. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the whole box upstairs for my suitcase. I'll get to them. Good. But you four stay where you are. That girl really ought to have had some. They're crisp and butter. The nerves are in a bit of a bad state. I don't believe I agree with you there. Miss Claythorne seems like a cool and resourceful young lady. Remarkably so. So that's your idea? That she's the ace in the deck? Hardly likely. A woman! You and I see women from different angles, Doctor. What about a spot of whiskey? We could use that, right? Fine by me, and provide a new title and unopened bottle. Oh, of course. Oh, 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 o
Well, I don't he was there all right. I'm the father of his missus. That's when I came to your door and told you to stay put, no matter what happened. And when they came down here, the front door was wide open, and the gun was sitting right there. Uh, why did she throw the gun? <laughs> I don't know. Either an accident, or she's crazy. Mm. Where do you think she is? Lurking somewhere, waiting to have a crack at one of us. Well, then we ought to search the house. And walk into a trap? I hadn't thought of that. That's right, you hadn't. You're quite certain you didn't hear anything at all after we left? I imagined all sorts of things. Though nothing short of setting the house on fire would me to unlock my door. I see. Just thoroughly suspicious is all. You've got to do something. I'll tell you what we're going to do. What? Sit here and do nothing. Nothing? Do nothing. Take no risks. But we've got to go after that woman. Ugh, what a job of the bull dog breed you are, Lord. I say, you really did go for a spot of perjury, didn't you? Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference to admit it now. I did blend or away for a stretch. Oh, mind you, I wouldn't be saying this if it wasn't, well, if I didn't think we were all in the same boat, you know? Right. Mind you, I, I also couldn't say it to the judge. Oh, no, of course not. You know, that fellow Seaton, the one he had put away, you don't think he was innocent too, do you? Oh, I have no doubt. Wargrave wanted him out of the way for a reason. Mm. Well, Lord, I'm delighted you've come off your virtuous perch. Made a tidy bit out of it, didn't you? Not nearly as much as I should have, but I got my promotion. <laughs> yes, and Lander got penal servitude and died in jail. Well, I couldn't tell he was going to die, could I? No, that was just your bad luck. <laughs> His, you mean? No. Yours too, because as a result of that fact, you might have your life cut unpleasantly short. By an Armstrong? <coughs> yeah, I'll watch it. You'd better. There are only three little villagers left. What about you? <laughs> That'll be fine. I've gotten out of tight places before. Besides, I have my revolver. You know, we only <coughs> have his word that he found the revolver here last night. What if he's had it the whole time? Same old gramophone wreck! What is it, Lore? No room in your head for more than one idea at a time. No! Yes? No. It's a good idea. <laughs> and you're sticking to it. That's right. I'd have thought of a better story if I were you. No, oh, I just wanted something simple enough that a police officer could understand. What's wrong with the police? Nothing. Now that you've left the board. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, Captain Lombard, if you're an honest man like you pretend. Oh, come on, Floor. We're neither of us honest. I just say you should chuck the gun down there. Don't be an ass. <laughs> ah! Ah! If I search the house, will you give it to me? No. It's my revolver, and I'm sticking to it. You know what I'm beginning to think? <laughs> You're not beginning to think it, you square-headed flabby. You've been thinking it the whole time, that I'm the one and only Mr. One out of No, I won't contradict you. Well, think whatever you like, Thor, but I won't have you. Oh, yes! Ah!
right, it's my turn. Oh, it's all right. This is a court of justice. You'll get your justice. You thought I was a ghost? You thought I was dead? I'm sorry, said I was dead. That's what's a clever part of my plan. Send me fix up my supposed death so I should be free to spy upon the guilty one. Oh, she thought it an excellent plan. Came to meet me that night by the cliff edge without suspicion. I sent her over with a push. So easily. Do it! I wouldn't do that if I were you. You know, Miss Cliff, all my life I've wanted to take life. Oh, you must! Yes! To take it! I've had to give what enjoyment I can out of sentencing the guilty to death. But that has never been enough. I've always wanted to do it with my own hands. But I am a judge of the High Court. I have a sense of justice. Between our sovereign lord, the king, and the prisoner at the bar shall true deliverance make. Guilty, my lord, yes. Guilty. You were all guilty. But the law could not touch you. So I had to take the law into my own hands. Into my own hands! Sir, so let's do it! Anthony Marcet, first, followed by Mrs. Marcet, <coughs> Got the Kennedy in the back. Got the Angela she was chopping sticks. Don't tell me the Grimm's caught me so she wouldn't feel the hypodermic. Booby track for Bloor. Oh, Bloor was a fool. I knew I could get Bloor. The turning to a revolver, that was a clever bit. I knew the two of you would suspect each other again. Question was, who would win out? I banked on you, my dear. The female of the species. It's always more interesting to have a female in the end. Vera Elizabeth Claythorne, do you have anything to say in your defense? Prisoner at the bar, no, no, I sentence no, you please, to no, death! No, no, I'm not guilty! I'm not guilty, please! Always my plea, no, not guilty! No, and that's a court you're going on now! A verdict of insanity! But you're not mad! I'm mad! But you're not! Please, I'm innocent! Please, I never killed that child! I never wanted to! So you didn't kill that boy after all? No, I would never do that. Very interesting. It doesn't matter much now, though, no, does it? No, I can't have you no, spoiling no, my lovely no, wine. No, One little villager left all alone. She no, hung herself. I must have my hand. My no, hand no, in! Left all alone. We got married.